Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Rachel Chase. I have the great honor of presenting today as an arts and wellness ambassador for the Atlantic Center for the Arts in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. And I wear my t-shirt today to show my ACA pride. All right, so I'm very much looking forward to today because I'm gonna take you through a really fun process. The title of this workshop is Exploring the Spiritual in Art. And what does that mean, right? What does that, how do we explore the spiritual in art? And I'm not going to make this a whole history lesson on the topic, but what we're going to do is we're going to tune in and tap in with the connection between two of my favorite things, which is music and visual art. And we're going to explore this process through the lens of the art, the paintings of Wassily Kandinsky. And I'm going to tell you all about him in a moment, or at least some things and show you some of his art. Now, he was very versatile and he was prominent in the 1900s in Germany. He's a Russian painter. And um, I personally, well, I love his paintings. And that's why I'm sharing this with you today, because I love the musicality of his work. I love the expressiveness of it. And I love that he was concerned as a painter. He was concerned in with tapping into and expressing more of the subconscious material of life. So you have the conscious material, all of that which is in our external world. So realism is the art that explores expressing it just as it is, just as I see it but abstract expressionism, which is the style of art that we're exploring today, is all about the abstraction, the connection with the unknown, with the mysteries of life, and the feeling of that. And the connection between music and art is something we're going to talk about today, too. So before I get started and take you on this amazing journey we're about to go on together, know this. We are not trying to make a piece of art that looks just like Kandinsky's paintings. <laughs> we're inspired by the style of painting and we're going to use his style as inspiration to go on a process journey of art together today, okay? So it's not exactly having to look like his style. This is about you creating your style in the moment and just having fun with it. So I'm going to recommend in order to prepare for this, that you get some music to listen to while you're creating your work today. And pick out some music that is, you know, touches in on a feeling or a mood you're having, or some music that comes to mind that is transcendent, that connects you with that mysterious nature of life that brings you into that state of being, of kind of tapping into the unknown or the dream world or having a deeper connection with your spiritual nature. I'm not gonna be playing music in the background because of copyright laws and YouTube, and also it might interfere with this sound that you're hearing right now, my voice. <laughs> and uh, so, um, and and that's okay, so you can be, playing this and maybe listening to that in the background on another device or something or then or even pausing this video at any time to listen and just create once we get to that place in the class okay so very excited for this today music is my passion because i am a dancer and we dancers we need music and personally i love to listen to music while i'm making art because it helps me express it helps me tap in and and just kind of let go and let whatever wants to come out come out and that's what we're more most interested in today is just free expression and exploration okay so here's what you'll need today we're going to start out with um just some drawing paper to play around with line and shape and form just to loosen up 
and we'll do that in a little bit. I'm going to show you a little PowerPoint just to inspire you and, and talk a little more about Kandinsky. But so yeah, so pencils or charcoal even or markers is fine. Whatever you have on hand is okay. Um, and then I think what I'm going to do is take us into using. Now I'm going to use oil pastels. These are a little smaller. These are a little bigger. Or you could use chalk or chalk pastels, or you could use paint or markers. Even if all you have are like pens and markers, that's okay too. Okay. So you can just go super minimal with whatever supplies you have. I just happen to be very addicted to art supplies because I love to teach art and make art. So you know, not all of us are making art all the time and that's okay. But today is about tapping into your creative potential. I know my, my video is kind of doing a little funny focus thing. Sorry about that, but we're okay. All right. So before we start the process, get prepared, get what you need. Um, I do have some watercolors on hand just to demonstrate. We could use watercolors. I have brushes and if you're going to use watercolor, it's best to have like thicker paper of some kind. I, this is actually watercolor paper. So we'll just let this flow, okay? Let this be a process of de-stressing, releasing all of the stuff of the mind stuff, the thoughts necessarily, and just be present with yourself. It's such a good opportunity right now with me here to just be present and isn't that such a gift to give ourselves in this changing world may art never die and you know what it never will because as long as there are humans here there is art so let's get into this and and really embrace our creative nature okay all right before we look at the PowerPoint video. I just want us to center and get your art supplies and get prepared, get everything you need, get your music. And if you want to go ahead and start playing your music in the background or wait till we make the art, what, whatever you want to do, there's no exact right way to do this. Okay. But first I want us to just stretch the body and <sighs> take some big breaths and uh, just kind of move a little bit get centered just notice the supplies that you have it's good to get the lay of the land yeah okay so we're coming from a mindful place and i'm going to go ahead and just start the powerpoint here and share my screen so you can see what Wassily Kandinsky was up to. And you know, it's interesting because he was, from what I know of my grandfather, who actually passed away at age, uh, I believe 99, um, a few, let's see how many years ago. It's been, it's been five-ish years now. My dear grandfather, his favorite artist was Kandinsky. And so isn't that neat how we have this connection? He loved music too. And uh, it's pretty neat. So here's a quote from Kandinsky I just want to read to you. Let your ears, lend your ears to music. Open your eyes to painting. And stop thinking. <laughs> just ask yourself whether the work has enabled you to walk about into a hitherto unknown world? If the answer is yes, what more do you want? I think that sums up our intention for this workshop today. So that the process of creating whatever you make today is about walking about into a hitherto unknown world. Love that. So there he is. There he is. Very studious looking fella, right? <laughs> that was, who knows? I'm not sure what year that was taken. Um, so Kandinsky was a Russian painter. 
He was influenced by Impressionism, and Impressionism is a style of painting that was central mostly to France and in the mid and late 1800s. And at the forefront of that movement was Claude Monet. And if you don't know who Monet is, look him up and uh, you'll say, oh yes, I've seen that. I've seen that because his water lilies are everywhere and have been ever since. I was lucky enough to see his garden in France in 2006 when I went to Paris for a month during art school. I would like to do another video and focus on Monet possibly next time too, because he is certainly right at the top of one of my favorites as well. So Wassily Kandinsky's early training actually had a lot of early training in music, various instruments, played a lot of music, and his early career in school was in education, and he taught law and economics. He had a pretty uh, sweet job <laughs> as a professor that he left at age 30 to become an artist. He was answering his soul's calling. And this is one of the reasons why he inspires me so much because he went for it. He went for his true love. And I'm always inspired when people follow their dreams. At first, he explored a style of art called woodblock printing. And I love printmaking as well. Printmaking is, is uh, so cool. There's so many different ways to go about it. And the graphic quality of his woodblock explorations actually show uh, very, very much so in his later oil paintings, and you'll see that with, a, with the, the line work um, that he uses. Graphic quality, so I'll talk about that in a little bit. And um, I'll be sharing really my favorite paintings of his, and yes, of course, this is a connection with my grandfather because he loved Kandinsky too, and that prompted me to get to know more about his art. And as I said before, 1900, so 1911 and 1914 was really the height of the abstract expressionist movement, which Kandinsky was a big part of pioneering at the time. And he helped to establish the Bauhaus Art School in Germany. And that was from 1990 to 1930. Um, and then, uh, of course, all the unrest happening in Germany after that, he uh, kept making his art and uh, wouldn't give up, which I, it was just incredible spirit he had. And of course, centrally musical, he was a musically inspired, his visual art was musically inspired, musically inspired. He would talk, he talked a lot about how um, he listened to music while making his art and he could actually see color and shape in his mind developing as he was watching live performances or listening to various classical music composers works so possibly he it's possible that he had synesthesia which is this connection between the visual and the audio which is powerful and he said once i saw all my colors and spirit before my eyes wild almost crazy lines were sketched in front of me this was about his experience watching an opera performance in Mount Moscow. Have you ever had an experience like that? Isn't that amazing? So, so the centerpiece here is called composition. Look at that. Is that not musical? <laughs> so just take it in for a moment. Take in his style. So the graphic quality, those lines, and then filling it in with color that way, that's a very graphic quality. Those very uh, angular shapes. Um, and of course, this is very much a dream here, isn't it? It feels like you're going down into a dream and maybe there's people or very abstract indeed, and also very expressive. So abstract expressionism, very expressive, right? Look at those colors and shapes. And this was actually during um, the period 1911 and 1914, and I'll show you after he goes back to Russia and then comes back to Germany after World War I, he, his, his style changes. Look at this. More white space, much more angular. Of course, before it was uh, more of the blending colors, and now we have the colors that are put in various areas, very organized, and the lines are slicing through the space. So a different style, right? And then later in life, an even more <laughs> different style. 
look at that look at those textures now very textural uh lots of tonal the same color throughout but then these globular shapes and shapes within shapes within shapes isn't that fun so that is the um slideshow i wanted to show you today and some of his paintings and his style and uh yeah so i might put that up here in a minute again let's get started let's start creating okay let's just start playing and if you have your music to play in the background which sadly i won't be able to do because it would just it would distort the sound um but what i might do is hum to myself and mute the video while i'm working because that always helps to get the juices flowing i want to i want to really stress the importance of just letting it flow i'm going to take you through this process but i want you to let it flow it's so important to give yourself permission to not know what's coming next, to just engage with the moment. Engage with the moment. It's very good for your brain to do that. So I'm going to get out some sketching pencils. and So you can use pencil or pen here. And I'm going to start with the paper first. Um, let's see, that turns so. And if you don't have your music playing, I want you to think of a song. Think of a tune that you know, something beautiful. That's what I'm doing. And the idea is, first, what we'll do is Hmm. As you're listening, begin to make marks that express maybe the rhythm or the melody or the words. Just see where that goes. And then maybe fill in with some textures. Maybe even think about those times when you were having a transcendent experience, a spirit, an experience that elevated you, uplifted you, inspired you. made you want to move perhaps so we're not going for technique we're going for expression and what you're doing right now is going to inspire what you create after this in color And remember to breathe. As you do this. See about maybe exploring a different quality of line or shape now and adding it in. Now that you've got that rhythm going, find another rhythm, another shape, and make some patterns with that. You know, Kandinsky's art is very childlike in a lot of ways too, right? Very playful.
Yeah, so play around with some lines there. I'm gonna actually bring up his artwork one more time just to have you take it in. I might have gone a little fast through that before, so let me do that. <laughs> Here we go. Let's take this in for a minute. Take a look again. I know I showed it to you already, but just take a look at it and just consider how look at the background painting. That's his work back there. Those lines, those colors. Isn't that interesting? Just consider the, the relationship between different shapes. Maybe there's some shapes that you make that remind you of something beautiful that you want to add in. You know, sometimes he puts things in that kind of look like angels or birds, or maybe there's a symbol that represents something very sacred to you that you want to put in your work, some kind of symbolism. So abstract art is about, really is about symbols. All art is, frankly, but there's a lot of symbolism in there, isn't there? It almost looks like things could be trees or ladders or buildings, and they're all kind of in there together in this field of color, sometimes even looking like animals. So I'm going to stop this share again, and uh, we'll get back to it. So engage with your work and just take a look for a minute and see what it evokes, see what it communicates to you, see what the space is telling you. This is why making art itself is considered a spiritual experience because we're having a connection with the symbolic language here of our own creation. And so often artists will say, well, my art is an expression of my soul, right? So play around a little more here with your lines and shapes. Play is the most important part, I think, of the creative process. Even more important than technique. Because sometimes technique can get in the way of expressing ourselves freely because we try to conform to a particular way of doing something. Now, don't get me wrong. I have a fine art degree. So, <laughs> you know, it's important if you're going to really go deep into your artistry to learn some techniques so that you can then improvise from there to have some structure to then play with. But you know, you can create your own structure to play within by having a rhythm of shape and texture. The texture is the sort of the tone. So just play around with your shapes and see what relationships they might have with each other. And you might make a few of these types of drawings where it's just about making marks and exploring the relationships between the shapes, maybe even connecting them up somehow, some way to see. And you know, even as you're doing this, you're going to start to see a style coming through <laughs> something you couldn't have planned even you know just a style that is like okay this is expressing something here what does this make me think of and then maybe putting a symbol in that represents what it makes you think of you know i'm just going to put some color in this already because something is starting to come to my mind and I just thought I'd put that in here. So just see where this takes you. See, I told you this was going to be adventure today. <laughs> see where this takes you. You might even have a 
sense of feeling like you really want to use a different medium and you want to put that aside and get another piece of paper out or you know like another idea comes and you want to put that down on paper it's sort of like writing your ideas but you're not writing you're drawing you're mark making you're making marks shapes you're seeing how they can all connect up and just let it be fanciful you know it doesn't have to be a perfect thing it's just about blending maybe blending some of the so i've got some charcoal and some oil pastels here and they're blending together which is making something happen and it's interesting what i've got going on here repeating patterns happening here this is a little little style coming through something's happening naturally and it's that's it's communicating to me i feel that there's a language happening that's that's how art works it's a language that maybe only you can understand and that's okay we don't have to make everybody understand our art all the time <laughs> permission to just communicate with yourself right now through making lines and shapes coloring them in give yourself permission so we're going to use this same way of making and this time i'm just going to use oil pastels and I'm going to suggest that maybe you play your music a little louder and mute or pause the video and just go for it. So I'm actually going to pause my video for a moment and you won't even know I'm gone. <laughs> so I did what artists do and I got creative. So I'm going to listen to a nice ambient sounding track while I engage with the work. And I'll just kind of talk you through the experience. So I want you to just listen to your music for a moment. You just appreciate it. Appreciate the music for a moment. And think about what color the music you're listening to reminds you of. Or colors. And begin to do pretty much what we just did, except get a little more deeper into it and just let it flow. Making the shapes and the colors and the lines that represent what it sounds like to you. This is totally subjective. Doesn't matter if other people get it or not. Follow the music as you're making your art. And just play. The colors might change because maybe different instruments come in or different voices. The different colors represent different, different things, different parts of the music, different moods. And then just roll with it and color it in and 
Make all the shapes that feel good to make. <laughs> yeah. Listening to music and making art at the same time. That's fun. Let it flow. Just have fun with it. it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just get in there. Listen and play and enjoy the process. And just whatever your hand wants to do. Maybe you turn the canvas or something. Pick some colors that feel right and good for you to use. Let your hand just play with the shapes and the colors and color it in. It's not about being exact and precise and detail oriented. It's just about letting the movement keep going, keep going with the movement. Keep following the lines you're making and filling in the shapes. With different colors or the same two colors or just keep following your intuition here. Keep following the rhythm and the melody and let the music take you continue on follow the music. Follow the feeling of the color. <laughs> Get into it. It's like a dance. Just fill it all in. Have fun, have fun. <laughs> I hope you're having fun. I am. Mm-hmm. Shapes, color, sound. Yeah. The rhythm of life, right? Nature. Just getting some expression going. It's so vital that we all express ourselves. That's what I mean by exploring the spiritual and art. Really just being true to our self-expression is so important. That's how we engage with life creatively. Exploring the inner world of ourselves through expression of whatever kind of expression. Visual, sound, words, connecting with each other, and practicing listening. All right, so here's what I've got so far. That's fun. That's pretty musical. <laughs> so I'll probably fill it in and make the colors a little 
more um, saturated. And I'll turn that off. I was listening to The Orb, if you're wondering. The Orb is one of my favorite uh, ambient musical bands. Anyways, so how did that go for you? Did you enjoy that? Are you enjoying it? I hope you keep going with it. I hope you were inspired by Kandinsky's art today. And you can see why I love his art. It's musical, it's colorful, it's expressive, it's graphic, it's it's raw, and it it has a tone to it that is very much, it values the connection with our psyche and our inner world and the spiritual side of things, the unseen. So I hope you continue to be inspired to listen to music and make art and maybe even maybe listen to music and, and write see how that goes for you and maybe it's just uh, you prefer to be in silence when you're writing you know we maybe one day you prefer one thing and the next you prefer another and i think it's so good for us to explore different ways of creating and bring that side of ourselves out more and more and i hope that you enjoyed today and maybe watch it again and play around with the different mediums and check out kandinsky's work online i think you'll be very inspired. And I will see you all next time for another workshop or class on connecting in with art as a healing practice, art as a healing force. If anything, just to help de-stress, right? And feel lighter and engage in the energy of play and joy, which is very healing, isn't it? So again, I'm Rachel Chase, and I thank you so much. You can always find out more about me and my work in the world at rachelchase.com. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.